Hi guys and welcome to our new week on 30 Days Wild. Um, so we gave you a break from the videos on Friday and we gave you a fun task to do over the weekend instead and it was nature bingo. Um, so let us know whether you've completed that. You have to stay up late to listen for the owl calling so good luck with that. I really hope you guys have had fun doing it. Um, so today we are going to be looking at a species of owl that you would find at night time in the UK and it is the tawny owl, okay? So we did the barn owl a couple of weeks ago and we talked to you about how Bo survives and how well she's doing. Um, so now we have the tawny owl. Now you will hear them before you see them, okay? Um, and the best time to listen out for them is actually autumn because that is when all the young leave their nests. So they will be doing their vocal calls to make sure that they're not crossing over into another tawny owl's um, territory. Um, so this is what a tawny owl sounds like. You will hear a male and a female in this little clip. So have a little listen. So that is what a tawny owl sounds like. So the male was the deep hooting, okay? So that is a male tawny owl. And then the female is the cooey. So that is what a female sounds like. So in autumn, you will hear them noises going against each other because the young would be leaving the nest, um, looking for a place to set up camp, a little home for itself. So it doesn't want to cross over into territory. Um, so that is the best thing to listen out for. Um, so believe it or not, tawny owls are as widespread as our barn owls, but we see barn owls a lot more because they are pure white. Our tawny owls literally look like a tree. It is impossible to see them against the tree. You could be walking through the woods and hear one, but you wouldn't be able to see it and it could be right above your head. They are so well at camouflaging and this is mainly for their protection, okay? So they are widespread throughout the Britain. I have heard them, I have seen them. Um, they are incredible little animals. Uh, they're about this big. Um, so they're not overly big either, but they are really incredible. Um, the best habitat for them, believe it or not, is woodlands because of the camouflage blending in and stuff like that. You occasionally see them in parks and gardens um, and they would occasionally hunt over farmland and grassland as well, but they wouldn't set up residence there. They'd just come over and hunt. They are severely territorial. Um, so they choose an area and they kind of keep that area. It, as long as it's got everything they need in their ecosystem, food, uh, water supply, uh, lack of predators and stuff like that, then they will be okay. So they are carnivores, just like all of our birds of prey in the UK. So their diet consists of small mammals, small birds, um, and moles, believe it or not. This is the first one we've looked at that really eats moles. 45% uh, of, uh, of the tawny owl's diet is moles during June and July. So that's when uh, baby moles come out and stuff like that. It's when you see mo loads of uh, mole hills um, and tawny owls predate on them. So they may look annoying and pests and you know, dig up your garden and they're really frustrating, but they have that really important factor as well that they feed our fabulous tawny owls. Um, so unfortunately a tawny owl does not have a huge lifespan, they live for about four years on average. Um, occasionally they can go a little bit longer but obviously not as long as some other species of birds of prey in the UK. Um, and they are not nest builders, okay? Um, so instead of building their own nest, they would use holes in trees, they would use old squirrel nests, old crow nests, they don't want to do the hard work. Um, so they don't make their own nests and then they lay two to three eggs in early spring and the parents um, incubate them for just over a month 
uh, and then they will spend their time feeding them and rearing them, teaching them how to fly, uh, branching. So a lot of people see tawny owls branching at the moment. This is the right time to see them. So they're not completely camouflaged right now because they look grey and fluffy uh, as their feathers are still coming through, but their parents are teaching them how to get the wind under their wings, which is really fun. So if you do go to Delamere Forest or Bluebell Woods or something like that that's local around here, anywhere with a woodland area, have a look out to see some tawny owls. It's best to go at dusk because they would start to come out to hunt then. Okay, so that is the best time for them to come. Now our tawny owls are monogamous, which means they mate for life. So the male and female meet each other and they are together forever. Um, so that's really important. So they choose their territory and they live there forever. Occasionally they will branch out of their territory if there's, there's a shortage of food, but normally they would stay straight in their territory. Um, so these guys are protected. Um, so. Our kestrels are amber on the RSPB, our barn owls are green, um, buzzards are green, unfortunately these guys are amber so they do need our help. Not severely but if they keep declining the way they are going then unfortunately it means that they are going to be red in severe need of help so we need to start helping them now to prevent that happening. And there's lots of ways for you guys to help, which is really fun. If you live near a wooded area, um, you can put up a couple of tawny owl boxes um, just to help them with nesting sites. Um, because they don't build their own nests and lots of trees are getting chopped down, it's just helping them in one way. Um, you can take part in the BTO Tawny Owl Calling Survey. This runs um, through September, October and November. Um, but to be fair, if you hear a tawny owl calling, you can just submit your data at any time. Uh, and basically all you have to do is sit out in your garden or sit out in a wooded area. And from the, um, the sound call that we showed you, you can determine whether it's male or female and you can submit the data, your location, uh, what you heard, whether it was male or female. Um, if you saw it um, and stuff like that so it really does help them it helps us with the distribution of where the tawny owls are going once they leave their nest uh, I did this last year and believe it or not uh, they are more active during um, October and November so that's when we heard the most calls last year so it'd be really interesting to compare that and see what time our young are actually leaving the nest um, the main threats to these guys unfortunately is pollution um, I saw a post on social media the other day, unfortunately, of a tawny owl that had died um, because fishing line was left hanging in a tree and it got caught up in it. So rubbish and pollution like that, if you see any of that, please remove it from the habitat. Um, these guys are supposed to live and thrive in their natural habitat and us coming in and polluting it is going to cause them to not thrive. Um, so if you see any rubbish out on your walk, do us a favour, pick it up and pop it in the bin. If you see any fishing line on the ground, pick it up and pop it in the bin because it's not only affecting our flying birds but it affects our waterfowl, it affects squirrels and stuff like that. So do a kind thing today on your nature work and if you see any rubbish pick it up, that can be your 30 days wild challenge for the day. Um, Another thing about these guys is light pollution. So because they are nocturnal and they are so used to hunting in the dark, um, unfortunately street lamps and stuff like that are causing them to um, struggle, essentially. They're so used to pitch black that daylight, like having lights shining around and stuff is confusing. They get like uh, they lose coordination and stuff like that. Um, so try not to put any solar lights or anything in your garden if you live near a woodland area um, and if you can take part in like once a month in the go dark challenge so the go dark challenge is where you turn off all your house lights and stuff like that and you spend a couple of hours in your garden in the pitch black no technology or anything like that um, it's really fun to do, I love doing it. It kind of detoxes you, it cleanses your soul and helps you retouch nature. Um, so join in with that as well. There's plenty of ways we can help these little guys. Um, they're incredible birds, I love seeing them and hearing them. Um, so that is it for today on our tawny owls and tune in tomorrow and we will inform you of lizards in the UK which is always fun and interesting and they're a little bit weird as well. So thank you very much for listening today and I will see you tomorrow for our lizard talk. Thanks, bye!